analyzing formative evaluation data and revising, revising, and revising by Katherine P. Fulford, Professor, Learning Design and Technology, University of Hawaii at Manoa, Part 2. When something isn't right, you can revise. So Step 3 is to revise the content. First, chart your revisions for your team and report. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. You want to cover content, process, and format. Then, recommend changes and provide evidence from either your experts, one-on-ones, small group, etc. So here's what a chart looks like. First, you want to cover the various components that you see need changing. Next, you want to consider the various problems that you have identified. Then, you want to recommend specific changes and provide evidence of where you got this information. Let's take a look at another one. If you notice, this one has different kinds of components specific to the instruction. In this case, they used no recommendations to show that it had attention, but they didn't recommend any changes. This one is the most clear about covering content process and format. The problems, however, could be more specific. But when you get to the recommendations and the evidence, even though it's a different interpretation, it does make it clear. Pause the recording to look at process and format. Step 4. Revise content. After you've completed your analysis, you can go back and make decisions about revising. First, look at places where your measurement instrument is faulty. In other words, those test items that didn't work. You can delete and add items as needed, but make sure that all items are parallel. And then you can also just revise items. You can revise the stem, the distractors, and the content. Sometimes students have no prerequisites, so you may want to shift the starting point. In other words, you can pretest before they enter the program and eliminate them, or you can vary the entry points and remediate. You can also revise the behaviors in the hierarchy if they didn't work. You can move that entry line, you can change the level, and you can also renumber or reorder how they're taught. You can also change the types of behaviors you have in your hierarchy. If the instruction is not clear, it might be good to simplify the language. Add examples and non-examples to help clarify. You might also need to change the content, the wording, or the illustrations. You can also change the strategy you use to present the information. The sequence, the chunk size, in other words the size of the chapters. You can change the location of the practice as well, or add or reduce practice. Usually you need to add practice. If learners aren't motivated, you might want to improve the appearance of your instruction, or add more relevance. You could allow more choices of how to go through the information or how to practice it. You could also change the delivery mode. In other words, add things like videos or multimedia. You could also build in rewards. You can also change the motivational content. For example, the introduction to make it more relevant, the examples, making sure that they fit the audience, as well as the illustrations. You can also do more with retention and transfer. In other words, how can they use this later in the real world? You can also change the practice, the quality, and the quantity of the practice. You can also change your feedback, the quality, and the quantity. You can also change the way that you do things. So step five is to revise the process. The first thing you might want to do is improve the instructions if they aren't working well. Also, you might want to revise the table of contents so that it's easier to find. You might also want to work with the page numbers to make sure that people can find what they're looking for. You may want to rearrange the sequence of your instruction based on what you learned in your analysis. You can also alter the placement of practice and feedback. This would be if you have a chunk that's too large or one that's too small. You can also add coding to make it easier for people to find things. You can use symbols or color coding to find things like activities, feedback, test items, and other pieces of instruction. You can also change the pace. You can change the amount of practice that you provide. If you have too much, you could take some out and that would make it a little faster. You can also alter the processing time by allowing breaks and reducing any superfluous material. 
Another way to change the pace is to improve the scheduling, in other words, the number of lessons per sitting or the number of days per instruction. You can also change the way that it looks. You can correct the errors, change the placement of the illustrations, or, for text copies, reduce the number of pages, which always makes it seem too long and too hard. You can change the type size or the font, or reduce or enlarge the amount of content per page. You can also have it two-sided, copied, or printed to make it look smaller. For media, you can reduce the overall text on a page to be less threatening. You can reduce the paragraph size so it provides more white space. You can add bolding or boxes to help focus attention. And you can improve the color scheme and theme so that it's more motivating. You can change the font type and size. Step 7. Now it's time to write up the results. First, you want to describe the attributes of your test and refer to them in your appendices. For example, the pretest included 32 items of those 5 tested entry behaviors, or of the 17 items testing content in the pre embedded and post test, 12 items were multiple choice, 3 were matching, and 2 were open ended questions. There are two different ways of describing your results. The first is explanation, but this is not enough. In other words, all you do is say exactly what people made on the test. You see here, pretest scored 100, embedded 88, and post-test 75. The decline in scores indicates that either the objective or the test items need revision. Well, this is obvious, but it doesn't really tell you why. Instead, you really need analysis. Here's an example. Learners had some difficulty with the question 2, which assessed the learner's ability to identify feelings or emotion words as evidenced by lower scores on the embedded and post-test versus the pretest. Also, the disparity of performance may indicate that the pretest item was not parallel with the embedded and post-test items. It may also indicate that the learners came into the instruction having a predetermined understanding of feeling, but became confused after being asked to make higher order discriminations between feeling and words that describe a real idea. These concepts are not opposite, but contain shades of meaning which may bleed into each other. You see how much more thorough the analysis is. You really have to dig deeper to have a good analysis. You want to avoid statistical terms that are not warranted. Generally, in small group evaluation, there is no need to do advanced statistical tests. So, for example, you don't want to use terms like correlation, significant, no significant difference, statistically, or the fact that. These are rarely, if ever, used in this type of write-up. Let's take a look at some examples. According to the results of the test scores and demographics, no correlation between age, race, or gender was evident. Oops. It's poor because it's got correlation between. What can we put instead? This is better. According to the results of the test scores and demographics, there was no clear relationship between age, race, or gender. The participants scored significantly better on the post-test items as compared to the pre-test items, but you have no test of significance to be able to say this. So it's poor. What can you say instead of significantly better? The participants scored considerably better on the post-test items as compared to the pre-test. And here's another example. According to the post-test data, there was no significant difference between the people who took it earlier and those who took it later. Again, we have no test of significance, so we can't say this. This is better. According to the post-test data, there was no obvious difference between the people who took it earlier and those who took it later. Okay, try this one. The scores of most students were statistically higher than those that didn't pass the entry behaviors. We have no evidence of statistically higher here. So instead, this is better. The scores of most students were remarkably higher than those that didn't pass the entry behaviors. Ooh, and here's the fact that almost never is it true, or rarely is it truly a fact. The fact that most students were positive in their comments regarding format, no changes were suggested. This is poor and wordy. This is better. Just say, since most students were positive in their comments regarding format, no changes were suggested. Trading the word since for the fact that. Little things do count. Sometimes people are confused between the word instruction and instructions. 
What's the difference? Instruction is a body of work provided for educational purposes, where instructions are like how-to booklets on a piece of equipment. So generally, you want to use the word instruction. Please round decimals to two points rather than three or four. Also, check your calculations. It's not possible to have 106%. Do avoid breaking tables into more than one page, but don't make them too small and unreadable. Be careful with the placement of your tables and figures. They should go after the text where they're referenced, ideally as close to your reference as possible. On the next page is okay, but don't leave extra space in between. Don't put all of them together. Space them out with descriptions in between. Remember, tables and figures do not substitute for text. You need to describe them. Are you tired of revisions yet? Remember what President Calvin Coolidge said. Nothing in this world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. The slogan, Press On, has solved and will always solve the problems of the human race. And this is the end of the instructional design series. You might also enjoy the front-end analysis series and the visual design series if you haven't seen them yet. If you'd like further study, here's the reference for the video. Other is from my experience.